Okay everybody, the Dean Winchester leather jacket is finally complete and I really hope you guys like that cinematic cosplay intro where Dean Winchester finds his old leather jacket in a 1970 Chevelle SS and then continues on right where he left off on another hunt. As you guys know, back in season six, the hero jacket from the show was actually stolen and the last time we saw the Dean Winchester leather jacket on screen was when Dean was putting it away into an old chest of his when he was living with Ben and Lisa. If only we can use our imaginations, right? Maybe Bobby stored the leather jacket away for Dean in one of his old Chevelles, hoping that one day he'll find it. We'll never know. I like to think that Dean has that jacket stored away in the chest somewhere in the bunker, and it's just like, you know, a memento of his early days of hunting and a memory of his father. Because Ben doesn't deserve that jacket, right? I mean, come on. I don't want to give away any spoilers, but you know, as you guys know, in the series finale, uh, Dean and Sam end up somewhere. And who knows, maybe the jacket ended up being there with them. Anyways, with that being said, here's the Wilson's leather jacket. I think it looks fantastic. I really like how it came out. Here's some side-by-side -side before and after video and you guys can see that it's almost night and day. When I first got the leather jacket, it was really, really dark with very little natural distressing. I had to do a lot to actually get it to even lighten up a bit. And then once I did that, based on the leather jacket and what I have to work with, I try my best to get it screen accurate. So I'll go in there and I'll distress certain areas to try to make it as close to screen accurate as possible. But every single one of these jackets have their own story to tell. And they already come to me with pre-distressed marks or from the factory the cowhide may be different and I have to try to do my best to work with what I got. Now sometimes you get really lucky like I did with this jacket and it's almost a blank sheet of paper for you to work with and you can really distress it and make it your own. So this jacket came out really, really nice. And I think the owner of this jacket is gonna be really happy with it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about all the road bumps that I hit when I was distressing this jacket. And then we'll talk about the pros, the stuff that I really think came out really nice that I really like about it, and some of the cons. There are a few cons I just struggled with or couldn't get right or whatever it may be. And then of course, at the end of this video, I'm gonna answer all of your guys' questions. For those of you that have been following me on social media, you'll know in the last four months or so, I've been updating you guys with videos and pictures behind the scenes as I'm distressing this jacket. And if you've watched my last video, you'll know that you guys could submit questions to me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And when I unveiled this jacket, I was gonna answer all your questions. So at the end of this video, I'm just gonna read out the questions and I'm gonna do my best to answer them. So stick around for the end of this video for the Q&A portion. With that being said, let's dive in. Let's talk a little bit more about this jacket. <laughs> As you guys can see, I got that perfect red brown that the show is so famous for, and the jacket really lightened up. Every inch of this jacket got distressed, including the arms, the elbows, the collar, behind the collar, the back, 
the famous stains or spots that Dean's jacket has. So one of the biggest challenges that I had with this jacket, as you guys know from my original video, which I kind of predicted, it was really, really dark. And I knew that I was gonna have to spend a lot of time up front just getting the jacket to the correct color, lightening it up. And originally I thought it was gonna be around a month, but it actually took a lot longer. It took two months, which is actually one of the longest times that I've ever had to spend on just lightening up a jacket. Now there's, there's actually other jackets that took a lot longer than this jacket to fully distress. And that was mainly because some of the other jackets that I worked on had natural distressings and the customers really, really wanted it to be screen accurate in certain areas. And it was a lot of back and forth to try to get it as close as possible to get the customer happy. This customer had great expectations up front of exactly what he wanted. And before I took on the jacket, he was sending me photos of jackets that he was finding. So he knew exactly what this particular Wilson's leather jacket was capable of. Hands down, one of the biggest challenges was lightening it up. But I'm really proud of how it came out. It really did lighten up dramatically. I mean, this jacket looks like it's been through hell for the last, you know, 40 years or so which is exactly how Dean's leather jacket looks like. The second biggest hurdle and challenge that I had was a very unique one, which I haven't really had to face in previous jackets. There was this horrible material shortage throughout the entire time I was distressing this jacket. And I don't know if that was impacted due to COVID, but for example, some of the material that I used was either discontinued or wasn't in stock and still wasn't in stock until today, or the manufacturer had changed their formula, which left me with this really weird unknown. I don't like using things on a thousand dollar plus jacket that I've never used before. And the materials that I used in the past, I absolutely trust because I've distressed like over 40, 50 jackets in the last, I don't know, 13 years or so. It was really challenging working with some of the manufacturers and trying to figure out exactly what changed in their formulas or if something was discontinued, you know, they usually had something else that they tried to sell to me. And, you know, I had to really dig deep with the customer representatives or the manufacturer and try to figure out what exactly had changed. As an example, one of the previous dyes that I used to buy and use was water and oil based the manufacturer decided to change the formula. And it was really frustrating because the, the bottle, the package looked exactly the same. But I noticed almost immediately that this dye was really drying up the jacket, a lot more so than I remembered. One of the biggest changes was, instead of it also being oil and water-based, they now had alcohol as one of the main three ingredients. Alcohol dries out leather, so that was kind of strange. I picked up the phone, called the manufacturer and said, hey, this thing looks exactly the same, but you guys changed the formula, that's a little weird. And then trying to explain to the manufacturers who are selling you products intended to restore your leather that, oh no, no, I'm actually trying to distress this leather and make it look old. So, you know, I'm not happy with your product. That usually just throws them off guard. And I can actually hear it in their voices when they're talking to me like, are you crazy? Why are you doing, why are you calling me, right? But they were really cool to work with, but it did dry out the jacket and I ended up making it work, which actually brings me to my next biggest hurdle. This jacket was really, really weird when it came to getting it to shine. I don't know what was up with this jacket, but it was so dry to begin with. When I had first gotten it, it was, you know, just like any other normal jacket that I usually get it had a medium shine but when you're distressing these jackets and you're dyeing them and you know you're doing all this wear and tear to make them look old you are removing some of the natural oils well I always replenish the jackets with conditioner and with this jacket no matter how much conditioner I would put on it it would suck it up for like a week and then the next week it would be dry again Originally, I thought, okay, this has to be the dyes, right? They changed the formulas on me, there's alcohol now, it's probably just drying out the jacket. But, you know, I used the dyes up to a certain stage. Well, when I move on to the next stages, I'm not using the dyes anymore. There should be no more alcohol, it should continue to shine up. It just wouldn't do that. And I had to go out and buy more conditioner, but this jacket would just drink up the conditioner every week. And I'm not kidding with you guys, and the customer can attest to this. I would send him pictures and be like, okay, yeah, look, it looks great. It looks like it, you know, it sucked up all the conditioner. We're good. This thing's shining. It looks beautiful. And then a week later, I'll be like, oh man, I can't distress it any further. It's dry again. I got to let it soak in conditioner again. 
so we can get all those oils naturally back. I must have did that like five times. So I probably lost a month, a month and a half, just trying to get it to condition and and get all of that moisture back. Now there is also such a thing as too much conditioner. When you apply too much conditioner, you're actually like blocking the pores of the leather, the grain, just like you would block the pores of your own skin. And then you're starting to get this layer of like sticky residue on the top of the leather. And it's not really sucking up any more conditioner. It's just kind of like floating on top and drying off and then you get this like flaking. It started doing that oddly enough. Now when a leather jacket does that, I gotta bring out the big guns and it's usually mink oil or some other really expensive leather conditioner just to get it to shine again. I had to do that. Now when you use those conditioners, they actually darken it back up. When I did bring out the big guns, as you guys can see right now, it shined up really nicely. The next biggest hurdle for me is there was some areas of the hide that just wouldn't distress right. And if you guys can see here, I had to distress the left chest area um, pretty aggressively because this side just wasn't taking to distressing at all. The entire right panel was really easy. It was just being extremely cooperative, but I remember that the left side was a bit finicky. It came out great, but that was another hurdle that I had. And then all of this fine details. The collar, just so you guys know for me, Everybody, every customer I've ever dealt with has a particular thing in their own image that they see that they really love about the Dean Winchester jacket. I've had customers that are super, super particular about the stains. They want every little stain exactly as is. And that's completely natural. For us, when we're watching the show, we see something that someone else may not, that really attracts us to the Dean Winchester jacket, to that look, the overall shape, how it pops, how it looks, how it drapes over him, the shine, whatever it is. Other customers want the pockets super, super straight. There's some customers that really want it shiny or they may actually prefer season one. And here's a little trivia, the jacket actually never changed, but season one, they color graded it really, really dark. So the jacket had a very dark brown, almost black look. And some people really like that. They see that and that's what they want. For me, I'll tell you guys, the collar is what I am really anal about. When I watch Dean Winchester, when I watch Supernatural and I see him pop that collar and you have the distressing right here on his left collar that's really thick and pronounced and then the right collar has a, you know, a, a little strip of distressing. For me, that collar, when it pops that look, Man, especially when they're doing the close-ups, I love the collar. When I buy a jacket, that's the first thing I look for. Is the collar brand new? Do I have a blank slate to work with? If I do, great. I know I'm gonna make the collar my own. For this customer, he also liked the collar. I don't think he was as anal as I was, but overall for him, he wanted the total look, the jacket looking old like Dean's. So here's the cons. The collar right here on this side, had natural distressing. And unfortunately, especially on the collar, when there's natural distressing, there's nothing I can do about it. So if you look closely, this collar has a thicker distressing mark, which is not like Dean's. The left collar actually had no distressing and I was able to distress it almost exactly like Dean's. And then the next thing about the collar is actually the grain on Dean's jacket. The grain is really large here, which makes it so pronounced. But on this collar, if you look at it, the grain's really fine. So when you distress it, you get fine distressing marks. It's not a big deal. The customer's happy with it, but it's just something that when I look at it, that's the first thing I see because I'm so anal with the collar. I can tell you guys though, if I had to rate this collar, and trust me, collars are really hard to find. Out of the 50 jackets that I've distressed, I think I had five or six that were mind blowing. And then like maybe another 10 that were really good and everything else was, you know, somewhere between okay to not that great. This one for me personally, just cause I'm so anal, I would probably rate it like a six and a half or a seven out of 10. But when I showed it to other people, they were really happy with it. And they were like, oh, that's great. You know, it's not a 10 out of 10, but it's an eight or it's an eight and a half. And I have to agree with them. It has that look, it has that pop, that Dean Winchester pop, which for me, makes the entire jacket. So hopefully you guys agree with me and it looks good. The next biggest con is actually this pocket down here. This pocket had a lot of natural distressing too and it's weird because the jacket was dark but it had distressing underneath. And remember, the left panel was really hard to distress. So I think it had natural distressing over the years but it just 
the tan wouldn't come out. As you guys can see, some of the grain is gone. And that is just because, you know, the jacket had natural distressing. There's nothing I can do with it. The biggest pros of this jacket, and he completely scored, the pockets were straight and I didn't have to do anything to them. I mean, both pockets are really straight. Dean's jacket has straight pockets. So that's extremely hard to find them. If you really think about it, a jacket as old as these Wilson's leather jackets that were originally sold between 1998 to 2003, 2004, and then this continued, these jackets are old. To have straight pockets like this, you scored. I mean, come on, what are the chances that the pockets weren't gonna get wrinkly? The next biggest thing that he scored on is actually the buttons. If you look at the buttons, every single button is in really good shape. No tears, no rips whatsoever. They look almost brand new. One of the biggest things that pops in Dean's jacket is his welted buttons. The arms look fantastic as well. And I like how the collar has that natural bend here. I had to work it a little bit. I had to get the seams to kind of flow because Dean's kind of like drapes over him and then pops out. It looks really cool on Dean's. It naturally did it as well. Like it didn't fight me as much as other jackets did. I'm really happy with the shoulders. The shoulders came out really well. There's no tears. All the seams distressed really nicely. And then if we look at the back, each panel distressed beautifully. I got all the marks just like Dean has his because his, his back is really, really distressed. But as you guys can see, the elbows came out really nice. What's really nice about this jacket is on Dean Winchester's jacket, the back of the shoulders when he pops the collar has really fine grain and distressing when you pop the collar up on the shoulders, on the back of the shoulders. And this jacket had the same exact grain, came out almost identical. So I'm really happy with the back and the back shoulders of this jacket. This is a really rare thing to see and the back came out beautifully. So to summarize, pros, this jacket was really easy to work with and it had a lot of great areas that were untouched, basically a blank page for me to get it right and make it look like Dean's. I love how the color came out. All the tan popped out really nice. It had that reddish brown right underneath. I didn't really have to do much color correction. I just had to get the color lighter and out. And then from there on, it was pretty easy to work with. I love how the stains came out in this jacket and a test to really know if I did a good job or not is to wear it outside. And if I get somebody that recognizes it as the Dean Winchester jacket, then I know I did my job. And people recognize this jacket right away, right when I wore it out. Now, granted it was summertime and I looked like a fool, but people did recognize the jacket as Dean Winchester's jacket. And then to summarize the cons, the grain on the collar was finer than I would have liked. Dean's grain on his collar, right where the distressing is, is actually fatter, which makes it pop and stand out more. The jacket really struggled to shine. There's something weird about this jacket or the grain or whatever, it just doesn't want to shine, but it came out good and it's okay now. The next biggest con had nothing to do with the jacket. It was really the materials, probably due to COVID. I mean, I was just having such a hard time getting the materials I needed. Okay, everybody, now for my favorite part, I'm gonna be answering all your guys' questions. I looked at the previous video where, you know, I talked about this jacket when I first got it. And then I also looked at TikTok, um, Facebook, and Instagram. And I kind of just took like the most popular questions and I'm gonna attempt to answer them right now. Your questions mainly revolved around where can you buy this jacket brand new with tags or do I personally sell or make these jackets? Do I personally make this jacket for the show? Do I personally sell Wilson's jackets? How can I get a new Dean Winchester leather jacket with tags? Just to be perfectly clear, this jacket was made by Wilson's leather from 1998, the year 1998 to 2003, 2004. They discontinued it at some time between 2003, 2004. You cannot buy this jacket new with tags. So you have to get it used secondhand from eBay or Craigslist or OfferUp or whatever. A yard sale if you're lucky or a garage sale or something like that. And if you live in Europe or outside of the US, it's even harder to get it. So yeah, this was a model for the US market and discontinued in 2004. The next question is, there are so many variations of this jacket. I've seen the same exact style made by M. Julian, Wilson's leather. There's black, brown, even tan versions of this jacket. Some are made in China, some are made in Pakistan, some are made in India. 
which jacket is the correct one and why did Wilson's Leather have so many variations? This is a really good question and Wilson's Leather had terrible, terrible quality control. Not all smalls were made the same or not all sizes were made the same. So if you bought a large from Detroit and you bought a large from California, they were completely different. No one knows why, um, but Wilson's was really inconsistent. Now the leather hide and all that, you know, they bought the same hide. And these jackets, the Wilson's leather, the Dean Winchester jackets are all made in Pakistan. So I found old advertisement or a brochure from Wilson's leather back in that time period. And the way that Wilson's leather advertised their jackets, they actually made several variations of the same style. M. Julian was supposed to target their younger customers. It was supposed to be like the new hip style. If you happen to find an M. Julian, you know, uh, Dean Winchester jacket that has that same style, you'll see that they, they added certain things like a cell phone pocket or a CD, or back then there were CD players, a CD player like storage pocket, you know, things like that, extra zippers. It wasn't the highest quality jacket that they sold. The Pelly Studio was usually their more conservative, more formal jacket, uh, targeted at an older audience. Thinner, smaller, fitted, and targeting an older audience for formal occasions. So they tended to use kind of like exotic hides like lamb. The Wilson's brand was their top of the line brand and it was more traditional. It had that traditional look and all of their variations were variations of the Wilson's tag. So the Wilson's tag was their higher end model and it was supposed to be true in the original look for whatever style that they were trying to sell. This is a car coat. So Wilson's made a car coat with welted buttons, which is very hard to make, um, but was very popular and common back in the 50s and 60s. They kept it very true. Their Wilson's line uses the most expensive cowhide um, with the best grain and almost always came from Pakistan. The M. Julians were a mixture. Because they were the hip line, they tended to cut corners um, and they usually had many different variations of it. Like for example, the M. Julian, the same style, comes in black, tan, just like you said, or the M. Julian that was pre-distressed from the factory, which came from India, which was a brown leather jacket. It was, it was basically the same jacket, different seams, but the same jacket already distressed from Wilson's leather. Keep in mind, Wilson's leather today is not the same Wilson's leather as they were, you know, back in 1998, 2000, 2004. Actually, Wilson's was doing very well back then. They were literally considered the leather experts. And if you wanted a good leather jacket, you went to Wilson's leather. Ironically, Wilson's leather had sort of like a deal with the WB and uh, even the CW, where they were giving out their leather jackets. I mean, you, you would see th the leather jackets on like Seventh Heaven, uh, Smallville, of course, Supernatural, but that wasn't intended. I mean, Wilson's would give out their jackets to, you know, these up and coming WB shows like Dawson's Creek, Seventh Heaven, Smallville, and it was sort of like free advertisement. You'd also see a lot of behind the scenes of the actors at parties wearing Wilson's leather or even Wilson's leather photo shoots with some of the actors. Wilson's leather kind of shot themselves in the foot because they had so many different variations. They actually went bankrupt and out of business multiple times. And I think they're currently around, but they're nowhere near what they used to be. So this jacket's long gone, unfortunately. Wilson's never gonna bring it back. I don't even think the people who own Wilson's leather right now have any connections with this jacket or even know you know who the designers were or how to even make this jacket anymore so that's really unfortunate but you know it's discontinued and yes there's many different variations okay the next question this is a really popular question but i just can't answer it i don't know how to answer it is can you make a step-by-step -step video of how to distress the dean winchester jacket so no i can't do that uh the reason behind that is I did a video a long time ago and it wasn't even a step-by-step. -step. It was sort of like a, like a time-lapse overall, like, you know, my techniques. And someone who had a Wilson's leather jacket attempted to distress their jacket and they ruined it and then they tried to blame me for it. That's one of the reasons why I don't do any step-by-step -step videos because it's not easy to do. It took me a long time to figure out how to distress these jackets. Um, I ruined a lot of jackets. Now, I didn't ruin Wilson's jackets, but I bought similar Wilson's jackets with the same grain, like a motorcycle jacket. And then I um, practiced on it until I got really good at it, but I must've ruined like 10 jackets or so. And my technique isn't something that like, 
I can photograph or, or take a video of because you really have to be there in person to see how I'm very carefully and precisely changing the jacket to match a certain color or a certain feature from the show. It's not something that um, happens quickly. It happens gradually over time. It's really easy to, to ruin it and go past it. So I don't, I don't do any step-by-steps. I'm sorry, I just don't. And I wouldn't know how to film that because it takes months and months and months to get it right. So it would have to be edited in a way that wouldn't leave out any crucial detail, but it would be extremely long. So I just don't know how to do that. So another question is, can I stream myself live distressing a leather jacket? No, I can't. And like I said, they don't get distressed in an hour or two. It takes months. Okay, so here's another question. Can you explain your techniques and how you distress jackets to get them to look like Dean Winchester's leather jackets? Are you using sandpaper or any other way to physically damage the grains and get them to look like the jackets? I know of some people who tie their jackets to cars and drive off with them or even run them over and try to artificially and naturally distress them by dragging them through baseball fields. Um, no, I don't do any of that. I, I know of people who do that. I've seen some YouTube videos of people like tying a chain to their jacket and driving through a baseball field and dragging it and beating it up. I mean, I guess that's one way to do it, but no, I don't I do not do any of that. I'll tell you right, right off the bat, I use a method that involves dyeing the jackets. And I picked up on this method through the M. Julian because Wilson's leather artificially distressed the M. Julian's from the factory, you know, before they sold them as brand new jackets. So I had a lot of M. Julians and I would look at them and I'm like, oh, they're just using dyes or they're using paints and that's how they're making it look a certain way. And then they do also scuff them to, to you know, give that realism. I don't use any alcohol. I don't strip any of the manufacturer's dyes. When you use alcohol or any of that, you know, acetone or any of that stuff, you're stripping the original dyes that make this jacket what it is from the manufacturer. There is no way you can re-dye this jacket. There's no way Wilson's leather from the factory in Pakistan will dip the entire leather jacket, the entire cowhide in a drum dye. And it's not just one drum dye, it's several. There's a process that they do. And if you strip that with alcohol, you're done. You, you just ruined a jacket and you need to go get another jacket. I don't use any steel wire brushes. I've heard that a lot. People go out to like Home Depot and they'll buy a steel wire brush and they'll go to town, you know, with the jacket. That's just putting all these scratches into the jacket. These little thin scratches that are just cutting through the grain and ruining the jacket and it looks completely unnatural. I do use plastic brushes and brass brushes because they are not anywhere near as rough with the jacket as a steel wire brush would be. And the brass brush and the plastic brush are used um, in sequence to one another. Usually I'll distress something if I really want to make a you know noticeable mark, I'll use the brass brush and really scuff it up. And then I'll use the plastic brush to um, to blend it. I mean, one of my behind the scenes TikTok videos, I showed you guys that where I was scuffing it up with a brass brush and then I followed it up with a, with a plastic brush and it came out fantastic. You know, another popular thing is sandpaper. I don't like sandpaper. Sandpaper just gives this really weird, what it does is it removes the top of the grain, right? So the grain's like this bubble. Think of it as like this bubble. Like when you get goosebumps, it's the same thing. And what you're doing is you're getting sandpaper and you're removing that top and you're flattening it out. And now you just took this really small grain and you've exploded it into this big circle, this larger grain, and it looks really unnatural. So I stay away from sandpaper, but I do use sandpaper on the seams to get that outline. Um, on the shoulders, on the seams, and you can see it here. Uh, that's really the only time I use sandpaper. Okay, so these, these next questions are really kind of related to the show. Have I ever met Jensen Ackles? And do I have any connections with Supernatural? The answer is no, I've never personally met Jensen Ackles. And no, I don't have any more connections with the show. I did though. Back in season six, when they stole the original jacket, I was selling a jacket on eBay and actually the, the costume director then thought that I had stole the jacket. So they made a fake eBay account 
and they had me, they had this like fake address that they were gonna send, they wanted me to send a jacket to. At the time it was like this, this like XL jacket and I had it on sale for a really crazy price. Like someone bought it, right? And I noticed that their eBay account was brand new and the address that they gave me was like in the middle of a desert somewhere. So I thought that was a little fishy. So I ended up messaging them like, hey, I'm gonna cancel this and repost it. You're obviously fake. And then that's when they kind of introduced themselves and said, hey, no, like, you know, we're from the show. We wanna buy it. And my initial reaction was, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> thanks, thanks for the laugh. But they had sent me the money right away, which I thought was okay, you know, money talks, that's a little weird. Um, they ended up getting my phone number. I think they contacted eBay because I think they're filing a claim. And uh, you know, eBay gives the contact of the buyer. Back then they did, they would give the contact of the buyer so you can hash it out. I got a call one day and it was actually the costume director and I, I picked it up and I, at the time I didn't know. And she's telling me that she's the costume director. And I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. And then I hear Jensen in the background. He's like, yeah, it's Jensen Ackles and you know, <laughs> Dean Winchester and we're, we wanna buy your jacket and all that. And I'm like, holy cow. So I didn't get to talk to him. She didn't give me the phone, but she's like, yeah, you know, we're interested in buying your jacket. And then that's when I had told her like, well, I have more and I actually distressed them. Do you want um, a jacket? And she picked out one and she's like, this is perfect. There's a large, she's like, this is perfect. The color's perfect. It looks great. The distressing's great. Like send it over. We ended up forming a, a pretty good relationship for like about two years, I think. And uh, it was a lot of back and forth where they'd ask me questions about the jackets and how do I find them? Where do I get them? And if I can help them get more, um, but for what I remember, the XL that I sold them wasn't the right color, and it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't something that I just stressed. It was just like uh, a regular jacket that I found. But they sent it out to get tailored, and the tailor ruined it, and it didn't fit Jensen right, and the color wasn't right. But the large that I lent out to them was perfect. I mean, they said it was perfect, but it was too big on Jensen. They ended up never using it. They kept it as like a showcase of what the jacket should look like because they needed something smaller and they were too afraid to get the jacket tailored because the tailor had previously ruined the last one. I just remember telling her like, hey, I have a small right now. Uh, do you guys want that? Do you want, do you want me to send that out? Maybe you guys can use that. Or do you want me to try to find a medium? And I remember her saying, find a medium. And you know, they never told me what the jacket size was. And I don't even know if they knew, you know, rumors are the tag was cut or something, but they didn't want the small. I mean, I offered it a few times and they're like, no, you know, try to find a medium. So long story short, that costume director ended up leaving and a new costume director came. And um, th that large jacket that I gave them was actually just on loan. And then they were, that new costume director was like, no, we own this jacket, you know, um, we don't know what you're talking about. So anyways, I, I kind of got into like a little scuffle with her and they ended up just paying me out for that jacket and I let them keep it. And I don't know what they ever did with it, but somewhere they have my large jacket. Um, so I didn't really have a relationship with Supernatural after that. So I would say probably after like season seven or eight, the costume director left and that was it. I never, never really spoke to the show much after that. Like I said, recently I did reach out to the newest costume director offering one of my jackets for the series finale. And she said that, you know, they would just pass. Um, they weren't interested in the jackets anymore, or I guess they weren't interested in Dean wearing the Wilsons anymore. So that's it. Yeah, I don't really have a relationship with them. I think I've already answered this question, but um, the next question is, do I know if the original jacket was a size small or medium? I can only assume that the hero jacket is a medium, but I can't confirm and say for certain. I think I also answered this question. Did they ever reach out to me for the series finale to use or buy one of my jackets? No, I reached out to them and they didn't want it. Another question that I get is, does Jensen Ackles know that I distress these jackets and has he ever contacted me to buy one for himself? No, Jensen Ackles has never contacted me. I don't even think he knows that I exist. Um, I doubt that he remembers that they bought a jacket from me back in season six, which was what, like 10 years ago or something. I've seen some interviews that Jensen was upset that someone had stole the original jacket. I think he was hoping that he was gonna keep the hero jacket, you know, along with the Impala. So if Jensen ever contacted me and said he wanted a jacket, no problem, Jensen, you'll get a jacket. Just tell me your size. <laughs> Uh, this one's this one's funny. I always get this. I always get this one a lot. Did I steal the hero jacket? I did not steal the hero jacket. I have no idea who stole the hero jacket. Whoever has it right now, 
is probably laughing their asses off or who knows they might not even be a supernatural fan maybe it's just some random dude that stole it and um because it looked cool or whatever but no i did not steal the hero jacket i get that a lot especially when i used to sell these jackets on ebay my ebay posts would actually get flagged and it, it would happen so often that ebay already knew that I was okay. So people would flag it and eBay was like, no, you know, they wouldn't even take down my account anymore or anything like that. They were just like, okay, yeah, we know you didn't steal it. This is, you know, I, was, I just I just distressed them. So it's actually kind of funny that eBay got sick and tired of people uh, flagging me. But no, I, I did not steal a jacket. Whoever has a jacket out there, you're an asshole. So, you know, return it. <laughs> this is probably the last question that I'm gonna answer. You guys can keep sending me questions if you like to my social media accounts or you can comment below and I'll try to answer more. But the last question is, do I have a personal jacket that I keep for my own? And if so, what makes it so special? Okay, yes, I have a personal Wilson's leather that I keep for myself. It's special because the collar is probably a nine out of 10. That's how great it is. And um, it's a size small. Size small is the rarest size that you can get. I've only came across like six or seven size smalls in the last, you know, I don't even think, I think maybe like five size smalls in the last like 13 years or so. And this is one of them. So size small is really hard to find and I did not distress it. I'm leaving it as is. I want it to just distress on its own and make it my own you know, jacket. I do have another jacket that's a medium and that one is distressed like the Dean Winchester jacket. And I actually use that as my base. So I distress all the other jackets based on that jacket because it distressed really nicely. So that's it for the questions. If you guys have more questions, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Just put them in the comments section below or if you follow me on social media, um, you can post your questions there and I'll try to reply to you. Okay guys, that's it for me. I hope you liked this video. I hope you guys liked the jacket. Hopefully it came out really, really nice. Stay tuned. If I get more jackets, maybe I'll make more videos. You guys let me know below if you'd like to see more videos of the Dean Winchester jackets or any more of those cinematic shorts, cosplay, whatever you guys want, want to call it. But yeah, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Hey, everybody. How'd you guys like that last video? Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified of my next video. And if you can, please share with your family and friends. I would really appreciate it. Here's some more content that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. Check them out. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.